Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Every time we get together with her, so much insight comes out, and that is because she's a medium. She's also a therapist. Love the blend there. It all works well. What's the difference between a medium and having intuition? It's been said that we all have some type of intuition. Does that mean we're all mediums? I wonder. I'm going to pose that question and see if we get it answered. Noelle Dean is back with us today. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. A little vocal problem there, tail end of a cold. Um, didn't see that coming, but I didn't use my intuition. I don't know. Um, <laughs> no, I should have because I was around somebody who was sick and my, my gut was saying, stay away, but it was too late. Um, so uh, do we want to do your disclaimer? Thank you. Yes. Uh, so the information presented on the podcast is educational in nature and is provided only as general information and not as medical or psychological advice, nor is it a substitute for seeking licensed healthcare services. Gotcha. Thank you. So intuition, why don't we, why don't we define each of them and then kind of go from there? What is intuition? I have a question. What do you think of as intuition? Intuition is an amazing ability for you to have a feeling that you should act on. Oh. It's an ability that we all have. It's, it's an amazing power. And that intuition has been with us since the beginning of man and woman. And that's actually helped us get where we are here today. Because if we didn't have intuition back in the day, we probably wouldn't be here to know that the Tyrannosaurus Rex was coming and all of that. So it's something that's in all of us. It's the same thing as a gut feeling. It's, it's a, a knowing. It's, your, it's you giving you the answer. But many times mm -hmm. we don't listen to the answer. And people have different ideas about where the information comes from. So you're saying, you, and I love, your, I love, love your definition. You said it way better than I do. Um, but some people wonder, where does that information, that feeling, that knowing come from? Some people think it's our higher selves giving us that. Um, sometimes I kind of, and I get this visual of like the afterlife, the between life as being this huge like infrastructure with so much going on all at the same time. It sounds a little, it feels a little overwhelming just to think about it sometimes. And is it we're tapping into like, the energy in the air, the energy, the vibe of our neighborhood, of our city, of our country, maybe. I think that we tap into a lot of information all at the same time from different sources, even from other people. Like if you think about when you know somebody's going to call you or you know to call somebody, you know, that's very different too. So, mm -hmm. and I see intuition like there's a spectrum of intuition and then mediumship. Intuition could be like, my husband is very intuitive, but one of his like superpowers is he's the parking God. So whenever we go, I'm like, which way do I turn? Cause uh, he'll always find a great spot and I don't. And everybody, I think if they think, if they really let themselves be present to it, everybody's got a couple of things that they, they they just, it occurs to them so naturally, they think everybody is that way. There's a lot to talk about here. Okay. Um, the parking God, that's me as well. But I don't think oh. it's I don't think it's my intuition. I manifested. Oh. So I'm I'm going somewhere. It's like I need a good mm. space. I need it close by. I always say, if somebody needs it more than me, they shall get it. Um, yeah. but I would say ninety five percent of the time in crowded metro areas. I get a space, great space, great space all the time, but I manifested. I don't think I'm using my intuition. That's just my feeling. Now you said some believe that the intuition is tapping into your higher self. How do you define higher self? Uh, and there are a lot of ways people can define it. Some people call it your oversoul and believe that, and some beliefs are that we are, hmm, that there's a part of us 
that's always in this afterlife space. Some people might call it heaven, I tend to not, and I don't even know what to call it. So sometimes I just say the universe because to me that's the space between like us and like, you know, outer space kind of thing. Um, and that when we are in a body that this is, there's a chunk of our soul in this body connected to this body, but there's possibly a bigger chunk that's still up in the eaves, let's say, that is meant to guide and support us, not to control us. You know, we have free will. If we're going to really kind of go into the, you know, rabbit hole of why we even came here, why we're having this experience right now, it would be that our soul, that oversoul part, uh, decided that we needed to learn some lessons, that we had a meeting with a council and decided what those lessons would be, who would participate in that, how we would support those other people who would be incarnating with their lessons. Some of it is to rebalance karma. Some of it is just to expand the compassion, the capability of loving and learning. Learning is a huge part of all of it. It underlines everything. So it's that, you know, sort of bigger section of us. So, and I appreciate all of that because I'm taking all of us in. And I think a lot of times what we do is we hear things and then we apply it to ourselves. So, or our beliefs. So that's, yeah. what, I, that's what I'm doing with what you're telling me. And okay. I 100% agree that we are here to learn. Mm. We're here to learn and there are lessons to be learned. And if we don't learn them initially, we will. We'll be forced to learn them. Any way you go around it, you're going to learn a lesson. So yeah. it's either get it now or wait years, whatever. Put that aside, the intuition thing. So I'm going to hold on my belief that it's in us. It's okay. a power that we have. And that's, it's within. It's one of the amazing parts of who we are. However, when you talk about the higher self, mm -hmm. I believe, and, and especially since what you just said, it, it, it resonated that our intuition also allows us to receive information and that mm. can come from a higher self, higher being, another person to guide your intuition, but your core intuition, it's there. You were born with it. It's, it's, you know, mm. trust it, believe in it. It's there to support you. So, that, so that's, that's how I feel. One st uh, so I have one step further I'd like to ask you. Sure. So as you're, as you're saying that, I'm kind of sitting with the question of, so do you experience it or believe it as the knowledge that comes to you to, you know, hey, your friend is sick, you shouldn't be getting that close to him. Like, does that come from you or are you just a radar and you just pick up on stuff? I believe it comes from you. I believe you know the answer. We know everything we need to know. Everything we need to know, it's within us. We don't want to hear it. We deny it. Um, you know, it, 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 the answer seems too easy. Let me process that even more. Well, you screwed it up. <laughs> you should just went with the original. <laughs> it's, it's there. But that being said, I do believe that we, we have an antenna where we can pick up on things and then process it using our intuition. See, I think of myself as a radar and not that I have, so, you know, totally respect your perspective on that. I just, I, how I see it is different. And I think for my own growth, I've needed to see it as something outside of myself and have it. Cause I, f I find that very humbling in a way that I feel like that's been one of my areas to grow into mm. is to, um, yeah, I mean, maybe things if, uh, well, I'm assuming this is all part of my lesson he, and why I came here. You know, I had uh, medical treatment that rendered my brain to be limited in certain things that it's capable of doing. So seeing myself as a radar to me at this point in my life and for the last, I don't know, 10 years has been empowering because then I don't feel kind of damaged or defective because you know, I have cognitive issues and it may not seem apparent as we're speaking because of what we're speaking about. But when I try to pay bills <laughs> or, or do something that requires like extended attention to something I'm not kind of thrilled by, uh, I have to work so hard 
Like I, I have to reread texts a couple of times, emails, like I'm, I've been stuck on student loan forgiveness repayment. Like I just, I can't even, the information from the emails won't even get into my head. So to me, if I'm just a good radar, like I love that because then that helps me feel freer to kind of flow through life. I love so that. And the, and the answer to what you're saying is because that crap is boring. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, there's that. Well, and then that's there's true. that. I got a pile of invoices I'm supposed to be processing. <laughs> I've been putting it off for three days. Should have been done on the first. I, I, I get it. I understand what you're saying, though. I, how yeah. about, would you say, would you say, okay, this is how I see it. You are a medium and you have an ability that others do not. We all have intuition. You have an ability to receive things. Mm. And I call that the mediumship. I don't call that the intuition. The intuition is, is in all of us. The mm-hmm. medium thing, that's totally different. That's receiving things, connecting, however that's done. You know, We can go deeper into that, but that's, that's the medium part. I mean, how I see it is that I have focused enough on my intuition that I have developed mediumship. Well, maybe that's, that, that's, that's the answer. Could be, yeah. I mean, when I think about receiving intuitive information it's all of the same ways that i receive mediumship messages Hmm. um it's the same skill set i believe i think i mean how you would pick up i mean so you you manifest parking spots but there's other things you pick up on just to focus it on you who you know i think that uh and i'm there's i don't i'm not a medium (laughs) i don't i don't choose i knew you were going to say that or you don't even sometimes it Maybe it feels hard to claim like I'm very intuitive or be I, the only time I believe I actually started saying that I'm a medium is after I facilitated a long conversation with my friend and her very recently departed stepdaughter. I had been training in all kinds of stuff, medical intuition and other things, but to facilitate a conversation, that was when I was like, holy crap. Like, I really didn't know I could do that, although I had been picking up on messages. To me, that was just mediumship. I'm sorry, intuition. It was just intuition. I was just fine-tuning my intuition. I was listening harder and more to the thing and, and abiding by the messages that I picked up on. But how do you receive from somebody's passed over? And what's going on there? Are, are you saying that that is a keener sense of intuition? I am. I really am. Mm. I really am. So can we use your example as? Sure. Okay. So it's been on my mind, and I think we've mentioned in an episode uh, that you um, might benefit from and and really want to do a mediumship session to connect with your dad, who you've asked for signs from, and you're not really picking up on stuff. Right. So you're like, what's going on with this? Why is, is he, is he not? And I think about it every once in a while, because when I when it feels right to me to do something, which to me is my intuition telling me that, then it just kind of sits with me, you know, and I'm sort of waiting for the right time or for it to feel right, and then maybe go ahead and do that kind of thing. So I'm driving in my car, I guess it was yesterday, and I have whatever station on, and I hear this Anne Murray song that I've heard before, but not for a long time. And then I looked at the title. I think it's called Danny's Boy, is it called? Dan, it's called Danny's Song. And Danny song. Loggins and Messina also did the song. Gotcha. Okay. So I, I hear this song and I'm actually really kind of listening to the lyrics. And then I'm just thinking, I, I, I'm just feeling very aware of your dad. I'm thinking about you and your dad, which I was you know, thinking about, I don't know, getting gas or something. So it was a bit out of context that it even came in to think about you and your dad. So to me, that's like, well, maybe I was remembering that I said, we're going to do some kind of reading if you wanted. But there are times when it just feels like, as you've mentioned, it pops in or it drops in. And so to me, that's like, oh, oh, I have to pay attention. And then as I'm listening, I'm feeling things about this song. I'm feeling this sense of being a man, having a hope for having a son and creating the son out of love and just things that that these lyrics 
dictate. And I find myself feeling emotional, which I often have when I connect with people who've crossed over. I feel what I consider their intensity. And it makes me, if I feel it very strongly, I can cry, like bust out crying, really. Sometimes I just sort of well up. And to me, that can, that can be their strong feelings of love or uh, compassion and um, that's what I was feeling from your dad. And it felt very sincere. And it's interesting when people don't have a great relationship with somebody who crosses. And then, um, and it's kind of a catch-22 to say, well, you know, my dad wasn't very emotional. He wouldn't have gotten choked up over that song. Like, that's just not him kind of thing. But people change. They get back to their more pure self when they're crossed over. So we can have a different experience of them as well. And that's how it occurs to me is like I was sharing last week about this friend who's about to get surgery. And I connect with his dad once in a while, who's recently crossed. But you know, then I get this whole visual of him wrapping this chain around his ankle and putting a sock over it to protect wearing his dad's, you know, like I can't make that stuff up. I just, I've gotten good at trusting myself that I am getting information and sharing it without filtering it unless there's something about it that's off. Well, the song, it, it has a little bit of meaning um, with my son now, not even worth getting into that backstory. However, mm-hmm. something told me that I need to look deeper into that, the lyrics. When you, you told me, you emailed that to me today. Yeah. And it, maybe that's my intuition. But something said, there's more to this song. Um, the name Danny doesn't resonate anywhere with me in a family. Um, so I look at the lyrics, and part of the lyrics are, Pisces Virgo rising is a very good sign. My dad was a Pisces. My son is a Pisces, and I'm a Virgo. So Interesting. I, yeah. So there's, and I'll bet you there's even more connection there if I look deeper. You know, on the surface... Danny, you know, I had a friend, Danny, growing up. It doesn't really mean anything in this, in this instance. But right. when you look deeper into it, and I've used that song connected to my son for a video. Um, so there's some, some meaning there. But the Pisces thing, um, it's big. It's big. And the fact mm-hmm. that, and I, I don't, and, and I think it's interesting, too, that my, my father and my son share within three days apart the same, you know, their birthdays oh. are three days apart. My mom and my daughter, one day apart. And they're Aries. Um, but the Pisces yes. thing and the fact that it mentions Virgo, there's a, I feel there's a connection. It's almost as if uh, the universe, something is saying, look at this song. And I'll bet you if I look deeper, I'm going to find more. There's going to be more connection. There's a reason. It, 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 you didn't just yeah. come up. <coughs> excuse me. You didn't just come up with this song. There was a reason. Yeah. 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 And, you know, trusting that first, like, millisecond of impulse of, oh, this is about Steve, or, oh, I should pay attention, or even, oh, let me pull out my phone and start recording this because I'm picking up on this right now, or whatever you're getting. Like, I can, like, you know, when we're doing a podcast, we're talking about things. I'm not doing a reading, but when I'm doing a reading, or I'm just in meditation asking for information, there can be like a real flow to things. And part of that flow, allowing for the flow is not questioning, wait, am I really picking up on stuff? Like, wait, wait a minute. Is this even go, your- literally, like, literally, you're going with the flow. Ab- oh, I love that. <laughs> you yes. are. You are. Yeah, it's true. It's true. And that's what I want to encourage people. A lot of us see ourselves as intuitive, but- you might be able to take it further in a way that you want to. I mean, I look at mediumship like it's communication and it's usually two ways. It can be two ways, but it might just be one way in its own way. I was trimming one of our uh, succulents and I find myself connecting with her. It's a particular kind of succulent kind of encroaching on my my neighbor's yard. And when you cut this kind, this milk comes out that if you touch it or get exposed to it or a dog does, it's highly irritating. So she's kind of dangerous and I have a lot of respect for her. And so anyway, I find myself like interacting with, I'm not getting information, but I feel like she's making herself a little more pliable as I'm trying to trim her because 
she's got these thick stalks and it's hard to do and I'm feeling connected to her. And you no, know, I could look at that as intuition. I'm just looking to connect with another sentient being. I could say mediumship. I probably wouldn't call that mediumship because I'm not really receiving anything. Um, but mediumship is just so much bigger than, quote, talking to dead relatives or, you know, there's a lot of ways that people perceive information. Even my husband will look at the fish and be like, Alice, wait, one of our fish has a name and it's Allison. And he'll say, Allison looks hungry. <laughs> I'm like, she looks hungry. Like, how does that even happen that she looks hungry? But he's just really intuitive. He's feeling her signal. He's a great radar. Is she communicating a whole lot? Not necessarily. Could we say that's mediumship? Maybe. It doesn't really I, well, matter. It's so funny. I'm like your husband. I do the same thing with my dog and my cats. <laughs> and I feel I, I get from them and I send messages to them. And, and I've told my daughter the same exact thing. Picture what you want them to yes. do. And they will. I, I just got something in that the word intuitive. So I feel that we have intuition. I feel I have intuition. It's, yeah. You know, I was born with it. We're all born with it. But when you say the word intuitive, I don't say, I wouldn't say I'm intuitive. When mm. you use that word, you, anybody, it, it almost crosses into the medium side. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's so funny how we trip ourselves up with something that can feel so organic and beautiful. I mean, I see mediumship, like speaking to people's deceased relatives or crossed over relatives as a way to help people suffer less. To me, it's a, there's a lot of suffering around sure. somebody's physical death. And there's, there's uh, like inescapable suffering and then there's unnecessary suffering. So I look at it like with mediumship and maybe I'm hoping to inspire people to connect more with their own loved ones who have crossed over to understand this line for themselves is that whatever you call it, call it just having an intuitive moment if you want to, you don't have to call it mediumship, but the unnecessary suffering of grief, in my opinion, is guilt that you carry over decisions that you made or things you didn't do while that person was alive, wondering if they're okay, wondering how they're viewing you and if they approve of your life now that they have the potential to see you in your everyday life and the things you do um, that you might not have shared with them before. That's really different than the inescapable suffering of somebody is no longer in a body and that severely impacts your life depending on your relationship with that person. But relieving guilt, coming to a place of grace, recognizing that you can still experience them around you, even if you don't feel them, just in having a knowing. I mean, I hear this when we talk about like your mom and other people who've crossed over. Some people sure. don't have that like knowing that their loved ones are around, but a lot of us do, even if you can't feel or experience them. But there's wondering, there's always wondering. So back well, to, you could really, ask your- We're almost geez. out of time, but you're really making oh. me think here because when I receive things from my mom, and I'll ask for signs, I've talked about this before, and they're very specific. Yeah. Yeah. I don't believe I'm doing anything other than looking, oh, being open, being yes. open to it. it. She's doing it. So yeah. I, I don't, I'm not saying that I'm a medium and I picked up on what she was sending. No, it was, I was just open to it. Um, and I believe that those signs are all there for all of us. You have to be open to seeing them and, and ne necessarily looking for them, but quieting the noise around you so that you can yeah. see the beauty in, in something that may be sent to you. But I don't think I'm a medium. I don't look at it. I don't look at it that way. She's doing all the work, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. And there are other people I know that cha get channeled messages and, and would not call themselves a medium. And I'm like, that's totally mediumship. I don't know why you wouldn't call it. But yeah, it's, it, and the label doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter unless you plan on doing something professionally, I guess. If I wasn't moving into that professionally, I might not have called myself a medium, but I might not have. Anyway, 
Ah, we, we could chase, I certainly am great at chasing my own tail about defining stuff and we don't need labels to know what we're capable of doing or connecting with our loved ones. Sure. Just putting it out there, try to connect more with your loved ones when it feels right to do that, when it feels safe to do that, and maybe close some of the gaps. So the unnecessary suffering, the unnecessary missing of these loved ones can be healed because you can really feel them when you're open and you pay attention and you let yourself trust that it happens. Wonderful conversation today and definitely lots to think about. Yeah. Yeah. In a good way, in a, in a, in a yeah. very good way. Um, but you're right. Labels, you know, I'm calling it one thing. You're calling it another thing. We're both kind of doing the same thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what we call it. I think that sense of being in the flow of life and connected to people that we love, that love us. That's, that's it. That's, That's the whole thing. So whatever you call it, you call it. How do we connect with you? Connecting with Noel, N-O-E-L-L-E dot com. Please also consider getting on my mailing list. I will be releasing a new type of digital class in the early spring. And I also have other offerings that I have if you want to check out my website or if you want to email me, connecting with Noel at gmail dot com. Would love to hear from you please do reach out if it's on your heart to do so. Awesome. Awesome talking with you. I have to go. I have lyrics of a song I need to dig into. <laughs> I do. Always great talking to you, Steve. You too. Thanks. Take care. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world. This is the Podcast Business News Network. Hi, this is Terry Crews. Actor, former football player, game show host, father of five, and all around big dude. I'm also an expert on drama. I know all kinds of drama. There's the good kind that comes with having a house full of kids. There's the bad kind like season ending injuries. There's the necessary kind like having an agent in Hollywood. And there's silly drama like the drama around my percolating pectorals. And then there's the drama you can skip. Skip the drama that comes with not having your high school diploma or equivalency. Find free adult education classes near you and finish your high school diploma. Visit finishyourdiploma.org. Or text diploma to 97779. Message and data rates may apply. Reply stop to opt out. That's diploma to 97779. And leave the drama to actors like me. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ed Council.